Good morning, New Bethel. What a wonderful morning it is. Let us stand for the reading of the word, please. The word comes from Psalms 34, and it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. His soul shall make her birth, her birth in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked upon him and were enlightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that feared him and delivered them them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that is trusted in him. I've read Psalms 34 in its entirety well, from verses uh, 1 through 8. May the Lord have a blessing on the hearers and the doers of his words. Amen. Amen. Let us bow for prayer. this morning, Lord. Lord, we come to you giving you thanks and acknowledging you as God and God Almighty, Lord. Lord, there's no one greater than you, Lord. No one. Lord, you're King of Kings, yes. the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord. Lord, we come to you this morning giving thanks, Lord. Thanks for this day, Lord, the day that you have made, Lord. And we will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. Lord, we come to you giving thanks, Lord, for all that you've done for us, Lord. Lord, we come to you giving thanks, Lord, for the renewing and the renovation of this sanctuary, Lord. And Lord, we're truly grateful, Lord, because you are worthy to be praised, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our health, food on our tables, Lord, reasonable portion of our health and our strength, Lord. Lord, we continue to thank you, Lord, because you've been good to us, Lord. Better to us than we've been to ourselves, Lord. Lord, continue to look down upon this sanctuary, Lord. Continue to bless it, Lord. Anoint it with your, your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, look down upon the song and your words that's going to be preached this morning, Lord. Continue to anoint that word and that song, Lord. Lord, look down upon this congregation, Lord. Continue to bless us, Lord. And Lord, when we don't have the strength to travel this journey, Lord, pick us up, Lord. Give us renewed strength, Lord, to travel this journey, Lord. Lord, look down upon the stick and the shut-in, Lord. Give them strength, Lord. Heal them with your healing power, Lord. Look down upon those that have lost loved ones, Lord. Continue to restore that joy, only the joy that you can give, Lord. And Lord, look down upon this congregation, Lord. Something said or sung here today, or ask them, what must I do to be saved, Lord? And Lord, let's give them that word, that word that comes from you, Lord, to let them know, Lord, that you are our Lord and our Savior. And Lord, continue to be with us, Lord. Continue to protect us, Lord. And all these blessings. I ask in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many is glad to be here this morning? If you know that Jesus is amazing, can we ask that you stand up and worship with us? If you know that he is the joy of your life and that he is an amazing God that no one compares to him, I encourage you to worship with us. So amazing. 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 So amazing.
catch my breath because I'm a little fat. But this fast is going to change you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He will give you to exceedingly and abundantly. All of this world. Service. The Winter Revival. 
will be January 19th, 20th, 21st, 6.30 p.m. nightly. That is a Wednesday, Thursday, and a Friday. You should be here Wednesday for Wednesday night. But come on down to the rest of the night so we bless the name of the Lord. GGU will represent its first cotillion. Come on. Introductory ceremony, January 23rd at 12.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. The ministry is asking for all young ladies ages 6 through 17 who are interested in participating to please sign up through today, well today, through January 16th. The sign-up sheet will be available in the Fellowship Hall. For additional information, please see sisters Janita Lavender or Dean Riley, Christian or Miss Cheryl Angus. And I have a poem for you all. Blessed is the soul that never forgets or let go of child of the child Jesus. More blessed still that soul which never mediates on the on the grown Jesus. But be blessed. It is the soul that never contemplates the immense Jesus scripture says. The son of Abraham grew and became very great. Isaac means laughter. And so my brothers, let the Son of God grow in thee, for he is formed in thee. Let him become immense in thee and from thee, and he may become to, to thee a great smile and exaltation and perfect joy, which no man can take from thee. These have been your Sunday announcements. Somebody just continue to lift up a shout of worship in place. But truly the Spirit of the Lord is here. And my Bible tells me that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we honor the Spirit of the Lord that is breaking out in this place. We thank Him for sending revival to this place. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus.
their minds are open, speak to them, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. We don't feel no ways tired. Yes. Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, thank you that you will fall fresh and we want to see your kingdom. That's our prayer. And you said, let our request be made known unto you. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You're the same God. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we give you glory. We give you praise. Receive our worship today. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, Lord. You're my strength. Father, every distraction, every mood, everything that's not like you, we rebuke it and bind it in the name of Jesus. Let us get our focus on you, God. So many things are trying to cloud our minds. How this looks and how that sounds. Father, we need to focus on you. Satan, the Lord, we need you. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Hear my mind so We need and I the Lord shall clear your mind. I the Lord shall touch your mind. Hallelujah.
beautiful song. We sing it at home goers, but guess what? That's a church song. That's a song telling us we got to get our heart right. And I felt that. Thank you, Jesus. We give God glory and praise for what he's doing. I'll try the, I'll try the lapel if it'll work. I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll try it, but it just wasn't working. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, let's look at the few sticks. I'll try it. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm good right there. Thank you, Sister Gibson. I'm good right there. Thank you, Lord. Y'all happy to be here? Amen. Thank God our youth and teens just left. If you have a teen that wants to go back to youth ministry, teen ministry, it'd be good for them to be poured into. Amen. We have some Holy Ghost filled people back there teaching the word of God. Amen. And we thank God for our youth ministry and our leaders. Can we give our youth and our teachers a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. All right. That song and that worship took 10 minutes of my time. Amen. That I won't try to get back. Amen. Chapters, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. When you're there, say amen. amen. Been preaching underneath this series since the first Sunday of the year called Anointed Churches. Let me teach and we'll scream at the end. Here it is, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. -man. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is it not the life more than meat and the body than remnant? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into their barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for ramming? Consider the lilies of the field, I'm sorry, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even in Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Whether with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things, but this is what you should be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seek ye first yeah, yeah. the kingdom of God. Yeah. I thought I had a church this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things yeah, yeah. shall be added unto you. When you look at somebody and just say, neighbor, neighbor, first things first. Come on, find somebody else and say, neighbor, first things first. Yes, first. And for some of y'all thinking, I'm going to pray for some of y'all. Hallelujah. <laughs> Have your seat as you give God glory. Thank you, Jesus. Anointed churches, you all, are healthy churches. I told you that last week. And I felt like I gave you a lot of stuff last week. Hopefully you were able to digest it. And if you wasn't, go back and look at it again because healthy churches actively engage in these four things that I taught you yesterday. Number one, they last week, I'm sorry, they continue in the apostles' teaching. That is the truth of the Old Testament and God's Word. The apostles' teaching is not apostolic doctrine. I am not talking doctrine here. I am talking the Old Testament. It was the Old Testament that all that they had. There was no New Testament when the apostles started the new church. There was only the oral confessions of what this man from Galilee did by the name of Jesus. The apostles' doctrine was rooted in the truth of the Old Testament. The Old Testament has not been done away with. Matter of fact, it was fulfilled through Jesus Christ. So a healthy church, this church, is a healthy church. This church is reaped in, it, it is sown in, it is bathed in the apostles' doctrine. Somebody say the Old Testament. The second thing that a healthy church has, I talked to you last week, is colonia. It is fellowship. It is fellowship that no matter what's happening in the world, if we got to wear a mask, we'll wear a mask in worship. If we need to stay apart from each other for a while. But kononia cannot be minus. It cannot be subtracted. You need kononia, the Greek word. You need 
fellowship. You need people. Nobody in this earth was created to be an island. You can't do, you can't get a job on your own. You can pull yourself up from your bootstrap. Can I tell you there's been somebody in your life that's helped you get to where you are. You need Colonia. I don't care if you had to do this on your own. Somebody was praying for you. So it was never you that got you to where you are. A healthy church, this church, an anointed church, somebody say need Colonia. And the second thing, third thing it needs is breaking a break. We have communion every first Sunday. And communion is a covenant meal. It was the meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. He shared it even with his enemy Judas. Konania goes with now breaking up bread. It goes with, watch this, why do you think the world says, I don't break bread with everybody? That's not a worldly thing, that's a biblical thing. What they're trying to say is, the reason I don't break bread with everybody is because I'm not in covenant with everybody. And so a healthy church needs covenant meals. A church like this needs us to partake of of the communion. Matter of fact, while you're fasting, you need to be having communion. Can I tell you that if you take communion, it will strengthen you. It will give you what you need. Here's the fourth thing, and I'm not going to re-preach it. The last thing I gave you last week was prayer. We need to be a church of prayer. And I testify online and in person, the only way that our church, one of the only ways our church made it was because of prayer. It was the prayers of the saints that got us to where we are. Matter of fact, had it not been the faithfulness of ministers and intercessors and mothers and you all praying, guess what? We wouldn't have made it through the pandemic. We would have been looking crazy and flustered. But somebody say, thank God for praying. That we work on, and that these four food groups praying, breaking of bread, Konania, the Apostles Doctrine, look at me, they can work in any area of your life. Take them to your family. If your family's having issues, are you breaking bread? Are you Konania? Are you fellowshipping? Or is somebody watching TV, this person on the phone, this person may? No, Konania says we're coming together and we're going to have a covenant meal. What happened to the days of having dinner together? They've been replaced with activities. And watch this. We'll make activities more important than Konania and church. Ain't nothing like just sitting down and having a covenant meal. And I'm not just talking about on Thanksgiving. I'm not just talking about on Sunday. I'm talking about on a Tuesday night when ain't nothing going on. Konania, breaking bread. Are you, is your family? Bring your family together to pray. And then bring your family together to look at the apostles' teaching. In other words, these four things can work on your job. They can work in your house. They can work in your finance. Anywhere you want to be healthy, apply these four things. Why? Jesus gave this to them. Jesus gave them the teaching. Jesus taught them how to break bread. Jesus taught them how to fellowship. And guess what Jesus taught them to do? How to pray. These are things that Christ taught his disciples. And these things can work anywhere. Well, today, you all, I dealt with so much, I want to deal with the root this morning. I want to go a little deeper this morning and deal with some things that I felt like we dealt with on Wednesday night. How many people had the opportunity to look at what happened on Wednesday night? Anybody that was, I mean, some people was there. And there was such an outpour of God's spirit on the church because we are open to God. We are not listening to anything but God. We're not talking to anybody but God. We're not eating anything but God. So when you are doing nothing but expecting God to move, guess what God can do? He can pour out. If you're not expecting God to do anything, can I help you out? He'll still work, but he won't work. He only works at the level of your expectation. So when I come to church, I'm expecting you to get delivered. That's why when people get healed, set free, and they run around the church, it don't surprise me why. I'm expecting that. I came in looking for you to get everything you need. I didn't even scream at your neighbor because they're looking at me funny and say, neighbor, I'm expecting you to get everything you need. Come on, you got the wrong neighbor. They're looking at you crazy. Find somebody else. Say, I'm expecting you to get everything. Everything you need. Chapters 5 of Matthew, chapter 6 of Matthew, chapter 7 of Matthew is what the Bible calls the Sermon on the Mount. It is the greatest sermon ever preached. 
I love Bishop Gene Patterson, one of my favorite preachers. I love Bishop Jakes. You can hate him if you like. I like Bishop Jakes. I even like uh, uh, people like Creflo Dollar. He is not a thief. You can say he's a thief, but I don't think he is. But I like him, so if you don't like him, that's just where we differ. Praise God. Uh, I like uh, I like uh, the great uh, uh, Reverend Jackson who went on to be with the Lord. I like hearing him preach the preacher with the tennis shoes. I like preachers, but, but none of those preachers can compare to this preacher. This preacher named Jesus preached a sermon that is by far the greatest sermon ever preached. It is one of the longest dialogues that we have in scripture. But it doesn't start in chapter 5. Watch this. It starts, Mike, in chapter 4. Chapter 4 is where Jesus is now going through this place called Decapolis. Decapolis means 10 cities. Decade Decapolis 10 means 10. 10 cities in a city in the region of Jordan. And watch this. In Decapolis, there's plenty of Gentiles. Not a lot of Jews, but a lot of Gentiles. And Jesus, who is a Jew, who was sent to the Jews, who was sent to the lost house of Israel, he's preaching to Gentiles because these Gentiles are going to need to know what God's word says. In chapter 4, when you read it when you get home, chapter 4, what you find is that Jesus is not only preaching, but he's doing miracles. He's healing bodies. He's opening blind eyes. He's healing sick of the palsy. God is doing some work. And the Bible says, and his fame went throughout all the region, and they followed him. They followed him. They followed him to this place called this mountain where archaeologists don't believe. They don't know where it is. But they followed him to a place and Jesus saw the crowd. And watch what Jesus does differently than we do when we see a crowd. When we see a crowd, we think it's time to perform. Oh, let me give my best stuff right now. Oh, I got a crowd. Let me give my best stuff. Let me give my best run. Let me give my best preaching. No, Jesus saw a crowd and here's what Jesus did. He sat down and opened his mouth and began to preach. Yeah. Can I tell you that if God gives you a crowd, it ain't time for you to perform, but it's time for you to open the book and preach what God's word says. The Bible says in chapter 5, Jesus sits down as was the custom of rabbis in that time. He would sit down and he sat down and preach. Watch this. He wasn't preaching to the Gentiles. He was preaching to his disciples. Well, then why did you mention the Gentiles, Pastor, if he won't preach to them? Can I tell you, sometimes I'm talking straight to you, but your neighbor will get it too. That's why you don't know why he came today, but I'm already speaking directly to you. But because your neighbor is around, they're getting the same revelation. God says, I've got something to give my disciples, but these Gentiles don't hear it too. Chapter 5, Jesus does something. Jesus does something so masterful. He is a masterful exposition in chapter 5 of Matthew because he talks about the law. He talks about the Old Testament law and there's nothing wrong with the law. But now he does something so key. He gives a godly assault against the legalism of the Pharisees because Jesus is walking. These people are following. But can I tell you that everybody that follows the Lord ain't with the Lord. Just like everybody that's at this church ain't for this church. I'm just trying to tell you because we got our own proclivities in life. What you mean by that preacher? The Bible says that the Gentiles will follow him. The disciples will follow him. But tucked away in this crowd were some Pharisees. Oh yeah, they blended in with the crowd. And they tried to poison the crowd. They try to tell the Gentiles, now y'all know y'all really can't go to church because you ain't circumcised. Now you know, you know you can't serve on auxiliary because you ain't gave your tithe. See, those Pharisees became legalistic and they tried to sound real deep, but they were trying to move people from Christ back to the law. And Jesus has a godly assault. He doesn't take any low cuts. He doesn't take any shots. He comes straight at their face and say, listen here, you brought a violence. I love Jesus because he don't cut no corners when it comes to that word. People say, Pastor, why are you so aggressive when it comes to the Bible? Because I know the Bible in the wrong hands will mess somebody up. But if you give the Bible to the right person, it'll turn your life around. See, y'all can't shout, but let me help you out. The reason that you're here is because the Bible was in somebody's hand the right way, and they shared the 
in chapter 5 is Jesus being leading a crowd, but in that crowd are some Pharisees. When you read it, when you read chapter 5, people of God, you got to take note of some of the things Jesus says. Jesus preaches and shows how human beings cannot keep the law. Can we have Bible study for a minute? Can Pastor have Bible study for you for a quick minute before I scream? Here it is. Is that Jesus is showing them that you and your flesh can't keep the law. Now, now, now why would that be important to disciples? Because the disciples, some of them being Jews, would try to earn their salvation. They would try to earn it. So Jesus was trying to show them, you can't earn nothing with me. That it's by faith. But, watch this, faith in me is faith in the law. Because I fulfilled all 613 laws. So when you put your faith in me, it's like you're putting your faith in Moses. But guess what? I'm greater than Moses. Now, 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 that's good for the disciples, but that's also good for the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles don't know nothing about this Christ, and they're trying to find out how can we get all that stuff you was doing in the compilers? How can we get that same power? And Jesus simply says, follow me. Can I, can I give you this real quick thing that there is something that we call a silent period. It's a silent period between Malachi and Matthew. It's a 400 period of time to where people call it a silent period. But it wasn't that God was silent that or God was absent. What it's really saying is that God didn't give any open revelation. The last revelation God gave, write it down. It's in Malachi chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Jesus tells them a couple of different things. One of the main important things he said, look for the prophet Elijah to come. Do you remember about three, four weeks ago, I preached a sermon to you about a boy by the name of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. And here was John the Baptist's message. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that you must be, talk to me, born again. Okay, so, so that silent period wasn't that God was absent. It was as if God was not allowing any open prophecies to happen. Can I tell you all that sometimes God may be silent in your situation, but he is not absent in your situation. Because what he's saying is that I'm through talking. I done told you everything you need to do. You need to have enough courage to go do it. You know, I, I don't like giving people the same instructions over again. Because two things are happening. Either you're just rebellious or you got a problem. And either way, we both got a problem because if you rebellious, we got a problem. If you got a problem, we got a problem. And Jesus says, I done gave you everything you need. What more do you need? Well, that silent period is, watch this, Malachi tells them, have hope. Because Jesus is coming. And Jesus takes an opportunity to teach his followers that the law cannot be kept by human effort. Watch this, pastor, I can't keep the law. So then therefore, I can do what I want to do. And I can have eternal salvation. Pastor does not believe in eternal salvation. I don't believe that once you get saved, you always say, this is what I believe, that you must confess the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you sin, you need to repent. That's what the Bible teaches. And the reason it got quiet is because we're trying to find out, well, Pastor, I thought I was sealed until the day of redemption. Like it says in first day, you are sealed, watch this. But when you sin, you have an advocate in Christ Jesus. And eternal salvation taught wrong really tells you you can do what you want and God will work it out in the end. And that's not how God works. Prove it with the Bible then. Well, then why would he say, if you're eternally saved, why would he say then, depart from me, I never knew you? Because those people will say to him, Lord, did not prophesy in your name, did not do this in your name. He's going to say, depart from me. We were never in relationship. I didn't say it. Why y'all quiet on me? Jesus said this. He says, you can't just act how you want to act. You just can't leak. I know a lot of preachers ain't preaching this, so let me preach it. And you can't just do what you want to do, and then it works out in the end. No. He says, for God I Watch this, and I'm going to live my life for the Lord. Amen. Eternal salvation taught the wrong way will make you feel like you can live a hellish lifestyle. And because you got baptized in vacation Bible school at nine, you was good. Think about this. If you reject Jesus here, 
you're going to reject him in the new world. And that's why he tells you, listen, I won't force myself on nobody. I'm going to allow you to come to me. But we preach this eternal thing wrong because we want people to feel good. And can I help you? I don't fall by the 11th commandment. I shall not be nice. I'm going to preach God's word. For the preacher and for the pews. See, the preacher thing is just for y'all. It ain't for him. It's for all of us. Some of y'all can say amen to that part right there. Amen. Watch this now. God says to us, chapter 5, I'm not preaching the law. You cannot get saved by keeping Moses' law. Can I help you out? It was designed for you to fail. It was designed to make you realize I need God. So when you went to the law and you tried to look at the law, the perfect law of liberty, and you were like, I can keep this. And then you looked at number 137, and you was like, man, I do that all the time. And James said in chapter 2, verse 7, I believe, he said, if you can, if you uh, went against one law, you don't mess up with all of them. So the law was there for you to fail. And really it was there for you to come back to Jesus. So chapter 5, stay with me, don't get caught, lost in what I just said. Chapter 5, he says to them, I want to show you how you can't keep the law, but your only hope is in me. Can I help you that the only hope for this nation is in Jesus? I, I know, I know you thought, I know you thought it was a presidential appointment or the new governor. No, it's Jesus. And the church must be the church. Preachers must be preachers. Come on, missionaries must be missionaries. Deacons must be deacons. The church got to be the church. And the church says, watch this, Jesus is the only way. There is no other way to get your deliverance but through Jesus Christ. So he says that in chapter 5. Read it when you get home. Chapter 5, it, it, it talks about the blessed all. Are the pure in heart. You know the Beatitudes. Jesus is talking about how to be blessed. The Greek word for blessed is another word for bliss and happy. Blessed are you when you are revealed and, and for, for, the, for the Lord's sake. He says, blessed are you the pure in heart. Blessed are, the, are the, those are peacemakers. Everything that he says you're blessed to do, we don't do in church. We're not peacemakers in church. We keep it on. He says, blessed are the peacemakers. Why get quiet? See, it gets quiet on parts where we don't want to read. And you don't open your Bible because you're scared to read when I'm telling you to read. Because if you read, you're going to be accountable for it. And don't fall asleep because I'm not going to have some good jokes coming. Y'all talk. Here it is. Blessed are they. Chapter 7. I'm skipping over chapter. Chapter 7. He ends his sermon how I'm going to end mine today. He talks about a call of true faith and salvation. And dependence on God. He said he defined this at Calvary's Hill. Yeah, yeah. Jesus ends the Sermon on the Mount in chapter 7. How I'm going to end mine today, whether you know it or not, I'm going by the cross. You know why? Because that's where it ends. Yeah. Jesus says, but in between, nestled in between chapter 5 and chapter 7 is our text today. Yeah. Chapter 6, Jesus continues. What he started in chapter 5. And this is what he says, believers. He's not talking to Gentiles, although they are getting the revelation. This is to his disciples. How do I know he's not talking to the Gentiles? Because in, in verse number 31, he says, after these things, the Gentiles. So he's telling you, don't be like the people that swallow us that have not been converted. Be like me that's going to convert them eventually. See, I don't know why the church wants to be like the world. What do you mean want to be like the world? So, so let me let pass like, up all of you in here. When you see lights and stuff in the church, that's not worldly. That's actually good. All right. Sometimes having it dim and having lights, that stuff, and having big boards up, that stuff is good. It actually attracts people and actually gives more purpose to the sermon. That's not what I'm talking about being worldly. So anybody who thinks that's worldly, that's not biblical for you to think that's worldly. What I'm saying is that when we have the same preoccupations as the world, yes. hence this, in the church, we should be praying, not gossiping. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. In the church, we should be loving, not lusting. Yeah. 
In the church, I'm going to get an amen from this side here in a second. In the church, we should be having faith, not worry. That's what I'm talking about. You talking about uh, uh, how things look in these lights. Don't turn the lights off. Don't, why not? Sometimes, sometimes we need to turn them off so we can see get focused what's going on. <laughs> I said, I'm going to fall asleep. How are you going to fall asleep when I'm screaming at you talking about love? If not, somebody going to wake you up. I'm going to tell you, wake your neighbor up. <laughs> Jesus says, don't be. Y'all still here? Yes. Don't be like the world. He says, he says, he says, I really want your church to be anointed. But I, your church got to put first things first. And they got to keep first things first. That regardless of what happens in East St. Louis, we going to hold true to God's word. Regardless of who don't like it, we going to hold true to God's word. Regardless of what they try to put on the books, we going to hold true. Is that your testimony for your house? That no matter what the government says, I'm going to hold true to God's word. That's what it's got to be. So this is what he says in chapter 6, verse number 1. Here's how he starts it. He says, take heed that you don't do your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward. You have your, no reward of your father, which is in heaven. Verse 1 is the catalyst for verses 1 through 19. Because remember what I told you that nestled away in this crowd are Pharisees. And these Pharisees are doing everything just to be seen by man. They pray on the street corner. They read their Bibles in front of everybody. They do their alms before men. And Jesus says in chapter number six, I want you to write it down. It's under my notes. He says this. He says, he says, I don't want you to be like them. I want you to write this down. But he wants you to focus on your spiritual tools. He says, can I tell you all something? That, that anybody that's sharpening a tool in front of you got some ill intention. Yeah. Somebody just talking to you random and they sharpen a knife. You might need to back up and leave. <laughs> Who does that? Yeah, man, what you were saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know what you're talking. Why are you sharpening this knife in front of me? Tools are sharpened when nobody's around. It is in the secret places and the secret crevices of God that God is having you sharpen your tool. Sharpen your prayer tool. Sharpen your see you don't wait to start praying when you get up here. You don't get up from prayer before you get here. So when you get here, you're just showing us a glimpse of what you've been doing. Try to muster up no anointing when I I'll get up here anointed. Uh, Cause I'm asking God anoint me for your people. Watch this. He says, don't, don't don't be like them. Jesus focuses on the spiritual tools. This is what he says. He doesn't say when you fast or when you pray or when you get read chapter six. He said not 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 if you. He says when you do it. He says when you pray. Here's what you do. Go into a closet and your father who sees in secret. He gonna reward you. He says, when you give, don't, don't let nobody let, don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing. He says, don't get caught up in no competition. He, he says, when you when you fast, don't appear to me and as fasting. He says, he says, anoint your head, wash your face, and you go about your daily work. He says, don't act like it. He says, just be about it. He says, because what you do in secret. People are going to notice. Can I tell you one of the greatest compliments somebody can give me? Is you look different. You act different. You sound different. Why don't you talk like every? Why don't you dress like everybody? Because I am. That's the greatest compliment. You know why? They're seeing something. Watch this. But because they're not born again, they don't even know what it is. So they call it something that's different about you. Can you tell somebody, praise God, for the something different in your life? Yeah, there's something different about me. There's something different in the way I pray than how I talk. There is something different. He says, don't be like them. He says, forgive your neighbor. He says, when you fast, I'm not the hypocrites. Oh, the baby Christ saying, preacher, you preaching too long. Here it is. But thou will not fast and anoint your head with oil. He talked about all 
these different things. But then he says in verse 19, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth. I want to help somebody out with this. Because having money is not wrong if you are a believer. And preachers that talk about money are not the devil. I want to help you right here. Because if the only thing, if I tell you, if I tell you this, I am the devil, which I would never say this, but I got to make an example out of it. So if I tell you, if you give me $100, I'll give you a blessing. That is demonic. But for me to talk about tithes and offerings is not demonic. It is biblical. And church people and people in the, in the world need to give to the church. And giving to the United Way is not the same as giving to church. I got to help you. I know y'all thought that. That you making a donation at the end of the year to United Way or to your greatest charity, great God. That's not the same as giving your tithes and offering to your church. Let me be pastoral for here for a minute. Talking about money is not demonic. Not talking about money is. Why? Because money answereth all things. Jesus talked about money, but this is how he talked about it. He talked about it, the relationship with money and people. That sometimes people put more faith in their money than they do God. That's why they struggle to tithe. Because I really don't trust God with everything. And so if God asks you for a little bit, he's only asking for 10%. And you can't trust him with that. How are you going to trust him to heal your body of cancer? If you can't trust him with $200, how are you going to trust him to heal your marriage? See, it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. And when we don't really, I'm not, I'm not, this is not, even, let me stop screaming. Because I want you to think I'm screaming at you. I want, to just, I want to make sure I get this to you. So I don't want nobody being condemned because you don't tithe. I want to help you. Yeah. Wake your neighbor up and say, neighbor, he's preaching. He preaching. Yeah, yeah, I know you don't think he is, but he's preaching to you. Je Jesus, he talks about money because it's the relationship that people put in money that they do God. That money takes the place of God. Don't you know that 100% of your success is by God's grace? Not 99. Not 98. 100% of your success is all because of God. Oh no, I had a good idea. You was a lie and you ain't telling the truth. It is 100% God. So the reason that, that I tell you that is that if you can't even trust God with that little bit, now when it's time for something major, it's going to be hard to do. And look what I just said. You can't just start mustering up faith. You got to build on that. So God talks about your money. He says, don't lay up for yourselves riches on earth. Where thief, look at verse 19. Where, where, where moth, moths corrupted and where thieves break through and steal. What is he talking about disciples? Y'all remember the disciples had some money, don't y'all? Y'all do know that before they started in ministry, he made their boat so full of fishes that they had to call another boat. They sold those fishes and went into ministry. You do know that, right? That they knew that he's talking to Matthew, who is a tax collector, who know about money. And Jesus said, I don't care what you know about. I'm the king of kings. Don't you lay on this earth treasures. Don't make that your major thing. I got to get my hustle on. I got to get this bread. I got to get this check. And you forget God. You better stop hustling so much to where you stop trusting God. On my best day of hustling, I still came up short. But when I put my seed in God's hand, He multiplied it.
saying is my faith is not in my job. Yeah. I work my job as until I show up on time. I do my job. And when it's time to go, I leave. I leave all the time. And I get mad when they ask me to stay late. Do I have a witness from anybody? Hey, I barely made it here. What you talking about? Hey. <laughs> no. How about that? Okay. So I didn't say don't work. Because see, 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 you got to be realized is that, that I want to help you with this as well, that money is not your source. That God gave you the ability to go make that, to give back to him, to trust him, and then he's going to give it back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together. Y'all got it? Why does he say this? It's because he wanted to make sure the disciples... And those Gentiles heard, money ain't it. Yeah. He keeps going. Y'all still here? He keeps yeah. going. He says, where your treasure is, that will your heart be. He talks about the eye and the light. But then he goes to verse 24. Mm-hmm. Took me 40 minutes to get to my text. Oh. Here it is. No man can serve two masters. No, it's impossible. He puts it in perspective because... He's not saying don't go get it. He's not saying be idle. But he's saying first things first. He said, said, don't take vacation, but first things first. He's saying don't go get a massage and a spa day, but first things first. He's saying don't take your wife and your family on a trip, but first things first. Can I help you out that before we go on vacation, and most of y'all probably have the same testimony, we go clean the house before we leave. Yeah. Who in the world, only got four amen, so I'm probably praying for some of y'all. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Who in the world wants to come back to a dirty house? Yeah. Matter of fact, the first day of vacation, we sleep because we don't wash clothes, we don't wash dishes. I ain't coming back to no dirty laundry because you know why? I'm bringing dirty laundry with me. First things first. That's why I just watched this. And if there's something first, there's something second. So there was a first Sunday you came, but that ain't the only Sunday you come. You keep coming. Why? Because he keeps on doing great things for you. He says... You can't serve for either. You're going to love one and you're going to hate the other. You're going to despise the other. You can't serve God. And I, I did a series on mammon. I think it was in 2020. I taught on mammon. The love of money. I taught on that. I, mammon is a spirit. Why do you think he says you can't serve it? So mammon is not, not mammon is not a food. It is a spirit that makes us so money hungry. That we'll do whatever to get it. Also, we'll go, we'll cut over another saint to get it. I want whatever God got for me. That's why I'm so leery of certain church things to get involved with. Because I know men that want positions only for the offering. And they'll do whatever they got to do to pull you down to get that office. I've been a part of two reformations and I've seen it in both reformations. In the church of God of Christ, there's bishops and superintendents, and they get offerings. Watch this, and I've seen men fight to get that position so they can get that reoccurring offering. I'm a part of this reformation in the, in the, uh, in the uh, Missionary Baptist Church, and our highest position is moderator. I've seen men fight to become moderator so they can get that money every, every quarter. Can I tell you that God says, if it means that much, watch this, you don't need it. If it's going to cost your relationship with the Lord, I don't need it. I don't need it. Matter of fact, I don't even want it. Now, the young me, eh, maybe, but because I'm maturing in him, y'all still here? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, he's almost done. And I mean that. (laughs) Take no thought for your life. Don't Don't you stop Stop thinking. I'm getting to the text. Here it is. Don't, 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 don't think about anything. Can I tell you that if you're going to keep first things first, number one, write this down. This year is not about your flesh. One of, one of our ministry leaders was joking with me and said, Pastor, 
why we started with 21 days, Daniel started with 10. And we started laughing about it. Because our flesh is like, yo, for real, 21 days out the gate? Yeah, we go hard and we choose violence on everything. Y'all ain't talking to me. It ain't about your flesh this year. If, if I wounded you, I, I don't know how many times I've apologized over this pulpit, but if I wounded, man, I for, forgive me. I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't know. Maybe I did know. But let's move on. Amen. If you offended me, cool, whatever. Thank God. God forgave you. Let's do ministry. Yes. And in a fake love, watch this. I genuinely, we good. Yes. You know why we good? Because he forgave me. Yes. So if I'm going to be forgiven, I got y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't shouting. You got to give somebody else. Yeah. And this you hit about your yeah. uh, I'm, I'm going to get They, they, they going to say sorry to me. They may never. So you going you gonna to drink the poison hoping they die? Wow. And about your flesh. That's why he says in verse 24 and verse 25, don't you take no thought for fleshly things. Right. Stop it. And stop calling grudges Holy Ghost. I don't fool with a lot of people. No, you're just rude and mean. Because if you don't fool with nobody, the problem is you. Because how you don't fool with nobody? You mean to come in there's nobody that you can pray with? There's nobody you can be honest? To say that you don't fool with nobody is really saying you the issue. So if you we should be saying, don't nobody fool with you. No friend? You ain't got nobody to tell you your breath stink. No, nobody? I don't fool with nobody. Now, if you say I don't fool with a lot of people, now I can get that. But nobody? He says, that's why it ain't about you. This is not look at verse 25. This year is also not about who left you. Or even who left this church. I'm praying for those who left it. I don't know they left. Some people left. I don't even know they left. Some people tell me on the, on the, through the grapevine. I don't even worry about that stuff. I'm praying for it because I don't know what happened. It ain't even about that. That's why he says take no thought. Because anointed church has got to keep first things first. Do I, do I want people to leave? Absolutely not. Are people going to leave? Yes. Does that matter? Not really. Because the gospel still got to be preached. If you didn't show up, guess what I'll still be doing? <laughs> Ain't no question. Do I want you to show up? Yes. Am I happy? Yes. But guess what? If I don't show up, guess what? You're going to still have church. You might have better church than I am. Who knows? Hallelujah. But guess what? God's still going to be praised. It's not about who left. That's why he said, look at verse. He said, don't take no thought. Verse 26, we're getting to it. Behold the fowls of the air. Somebody say, hurry up, preacher. For well, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much more better than they? Verse 26 to 30 is the key. He's not saying that the fields and the fowls of the air are idle. What he's really saying to you is, is that they don't do kingdom principles like you. And they still get taken care of. He didn't say that they're idle. They're not idle. They don't get saved or they just go to a church and they don't do nothing. No, he's not saying that. He's saying they don't do kingdom stuff and they still get taken care of. But now what about you who do so and reap? What about you that do give your tithes and offers and give your abilities? He says, if I take care of them, what you think going to happen for you? You have heard this boy and preacher preach for an hour and you mean to tell me ain't nothing good come out of Tell us the devil is alive. I'm going to be blessed because I'm more than the lilies of the valley. I'm more than the fowls of the air. Why? God is doing something in my life. He says, don't worry about that all, Solomon. He says, all that stuff. Okay, can I put this in perspective for you? Uh, when, 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 when we were married, I told the leaders this this morning, when we got married, I think I told you this before, T and Tali are 11 a month apart. So that means they, they came back to back. Okay, yeah, that wasn't my fault. Hallelujah. And they came back to back. Okay, now. Hallelujah. And, uh, 
and I, you see I'm over here. And see, and see, uh, I'll get to y'all in a minute because I ain't got no help. And the deacons just looking, they ain't gonna try to help me. You see? Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So, 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 so first lady was a stay-at-home mom, right? Which was beneficial for the kids. But I worked for the church, and, and, and the church that I worked for, they were, it's an awesome, amazing church, still going, amen. But sometimes when they paid me, towards the end, uh, there were some things going on, and sometimes I got paid on Friday, but I couldn't cash the check till Monday. Right, so now watch this now. I, I got paid twice a week. So if, if, if we use our money because we have one income, I, didn't, I got paid on Friday, okay, we'd be able to do some things on Friday, but they said, hold that check till Monday. Now, what's going to happen between Sunday and Saturday? You know, and, and I, if you remember, they used to give those plates. Remember those plates? Those styrofoam plates? And the first lady never ate them. She never ate them. Because there was just all types of food, and I would just bring them home. And we have a refrigerator with no milk, no orange juice, just plates. <laughs> okay? All right, now watch this. Now watch this. During that, Lord, how are we going to eat? Because your word says, don't worry about how you're going to eat. But, but this ain't how I'm supposed to be living as a believer. So Lord, help me understand how this scripture makes sense when I got to hold my check. Here's what I didn't do. I didn't become bitter towards the church. And I never talked about my pastor. And I never stopped going to church because I had to hold my check. On Sunday, we was at church. And I was hoping that they would say, you can cash on Sunday. <laughs> He said, God, you're going to have to wait till Monday. But see, something like that happened to us here. I won't see you for two months. And you might not come back until they brought a new preacher in. You ain't saying nothing. What he said is that I'm going to take care of you because can I tell you that God took care of us. God blessed us. It wasn't the way we wanted. But now, we got, matter of fact, we got food now that we got thrown away. Now I got my kids making reservations for me. <laughs> See, then it didn't feel good because I was in it. But now I can look back and say, God, thank you. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I tell somebody, you may be in it now, and it may not feel good now, but you're going to come out of it sooner or later. So he says, all of these things the Gentiles seek after, he said, they, they, they seek after all that stuff. This ain't about your flesh. Look at this last one. It's not about other people or what they're doing. Both so bought a car. And then we try to start counting people's money. Watch this. Watch this. You see me with something new. Mm, they must have got their stimulus check. No, I didn't. Don't worry about me. Because if I did, I wouldn't have been wearing this. You ain't saying nothing to me. Huh? See, we start counting people's money when God starts blessing them. You don't know what they had to do, had to say, had to cut, had to go through to get what they are. This is not about other people and what they're, not this year. Not this year. I ain't worried about other churches. No, I'm praying for them. That's why I love when our deacons pray every church that's open up in your name. Lord, bless it. Why? Because I don't know what they're going through. So Lord, bless them. But this is what this year is about. This is what this year is about. He says, he says, take no thought about what you're going to eat and drink. For all these things you're, the Gentiles seek, but your heavenly Father, verse 32, they know what you have need of. Here's what I want you to do, but seek ye first. I, this, here's, here's what this year is about. Number one, it's about you getting stronger in God. I don't care where you are. If this is too long for you, it ain't long for power to watch the season premiere. It's an hour. And if I only preach for 50 minutes, give me my 50 minutes. You can watch a basketball game. You can watch a boring game with the Bears ain't playing. You can watch the whole game. And then try to watch the preacher. That's why y'all got quiet. Because y'all like, hurry up, preacher. It's not about anything but about getting stronger in God. That's why he says, seek ye first. I don't care whatever you do during this fast. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to share this with you on Thursday night. On Thursday, doing Facebook Live, Thursday uh, afternoon, is that after this fast, some of the spiritual things shouldn't go away. You just shouldn't go right back into what you were doing if you're fasting. 
Jesus says, here's what I want you to do. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. He says, this year is about getting stronger in God. And here's the second thing it's about. It's about you sitting under the word, feasting on the word of God. It's about you trying to make every service you can just to hear God's word. I can't take a day off on God's word. I can't take a day off on praying. I can't take a day off on fellowship. You know why? Because on my best day, I'm still raggedy. So if I take a day off, I'm even worse. But is there anybody in here that needs God every day of the week? That every time the church doors are open, you can say unto David, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. Here it is. He says, this year, it's not about other people. It's not about your flesh. It's not about who left, but it's about getting stronger. It's about sitting underneath the word. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Watch this. And all his righteousness. That means everything that God does, you need to do. Everything that God says, you need to say. Everything that God has believed, you need to believe. Everything that God is about, you need to be about. How can you call me Lord and you don't do the things that I say? Everything that Jesus say about marriage, that's what I believe. Everything that Jesus says about the human body, that's what I believe. Everything that Jesus says about men and women, that's what I, I don't care what nobody else say. It's about God. And so he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Can I tell you what the last thing is about this year? It's about Jesus or nothing. Some of y'all miss your place to shout. But I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's about Jesus or nothing. You can have this on world, but give me Jesus. You can have all the jobs and all the money, but just give me Jesus. Because at the end and when the smoke settles, uh, there'll be nothing else that can say that can be but the hand of God. Because it wasn't a job that got me to this church. It wasn't my good looks that got me married. It wasn't my charisma that got me the job. But it was nobody but the Lord. Is there anybody with that testimony that is Jesus or nothing? Don't give me a mansion.
excruciating migraines. Listen, I'm not talking about where your head hurts. I'm talking about you can barely see. God says, I'm healing you right now. And one of you all is on the middle of your forehead. You can barely see. God says, I want to heal you. God says, I want to lay my hands on you and I'm going to heal you. According to Mark 16. I want you to believe what I'm saying to you. That when he's first, guess what? Everything got to come second. And can I tell you, Satan don't like to be second. That's why he brings distractions. That's why he brings offense. My will, excruciating headaches. The Bible says I'm healing you now. Prophesied two weeks ago about taste and smell coming back to folk that had no clue. God bless. God gave you testimonies. This is the year of the outpour, rapid blessing. I want you to expect by tomorrow. It's the word of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. He's first. First things first. Before we eat, we got to pray. First things first. Before I pay Amarin, I got I to gotta sow my tithe. First things first. Not religiously, but, but Jesus said this. Before you get my money water company, I'm going I'm to sow. Before I get mad, first things first, God, I'm going to put you first. I want you to pray to God. The minister is going to be coming in a minute to give you an altar call. Eyes closed, head bowed. I want you to just confess to God what you put in front of him. And say, Lord, I repent. Dad, Dad, God told me to tell you that he's forgiven you. So you ain't got to talk about this no more. Listen to me. There's a first thing. There's nothing with wrong, with wrong with being in sequential order. There's second, third, fourth. But first, seek the kingdom. It's not about your flesh. It's about Jesus or nothing this year. But they ain't coming no more, so I ain't coming until they come back. Is he first? I'm not going to serve in that ministry until they come. No. Is he first? I'm not going to give to the all in until they give. Is he first? I'm not going to join today. Is he first? Because if he's first, you won't worry about nobody else. Waiting on people to have you waiting a long time. But you can't hurry God. And he'll move. Father, in Jesus' name. Ministers are coming. I want to open the doors of the church. Eyes closed. Ministers are coming. The ministers are supposed to hold up today. I want you to do offering for us. Ministers are coming. Come on. Deaconess and deacons are there. If you're not saved today. I want to I wanna open the, this house for you. You need Jesus. I told you about eternal salvation. It may have become stolen to you. Jesus came to save you. From hell. So people don't go to hell. Scoot down some, Mr. Cornell. Come on down, Mr. Charlie. Come on down. Come on down. People don't go to hell just because of rejecting Jesus. It's because of sin. Eyes closed, head bowed, just listen to me. Sin is a separation from God. You don't die because you don't go see the doctor. You die because of a disease. You can prevent that disease by going to see a doctor. And you can prevent going to hell if you see the master physician. Listen to me. If you've been saved and maybe you backslid, maybe you said, Pastor, he hasn't been first. And I want to rededicate. There's a minister for you. There's a deaconess. There's a, a deacon. There's an usher. I need you to walk quickly. Here's my third one. I'm saying, Pastor, I, I, I don't really need salvation, but I need a church. I want you to walk down. Come on. I want you to walk. I need a church. 
I need somewhere I can worship. I need somewhere I can hallelujah. Glory to God. Join the line with me. Somebody said, me, said, Lord Jesus, listen, you don't have to come to the altar every time you sin. We're not asking you to do that. But you know that if you die tonight, in hell you will lift up your eyes. You need to make a confession. I think, well, Pastor, I ain't ready to do that because I ain't really ready to let go of my sin. And that's cool. I feel you on that. And that's kind of how I was in 1999. I was going to get saved and I was going to go back to the world. But when I got in here, he just kept a hold of me. And here we are, 21 years later, still doing it. So don't worry about when you're ready, just come. I said, this year's about sitting underneath the word. If you sit underneath God's word, it'll transform you. We're not a perfect church. But we serve a perfect God. They can do anything. Eyes closed. I'm still waiting on you. I believe somebody needs to rededicate. Somebody needs Jesus. I'm not going to force you, but I'm going to open the doors. I'm not a part of the women's 
ministry. Yes, you're off your woman. That only applies to men. Men are not a part of the women's ministry. But if God asks for this church women, women need to go minister. If he asks the church men, raise your hand, men, we need to go minister. No, see, I gotta get this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Real softly. We gotta catch this part. Because as God asks fish, we gotta gather men. And so y'all barely clapped on that part. Because that's the work part. This shouting and dancing and preaching is good, but when God adds to our church, it's work time. My story. Yeah. This is anointed church. This is a healthy church. And as a result of that, God's going to add to the church. And we give the Lord praise. Father, those that join, those that gave their life, as they're being ministered to in the back, we pray your blessing. We pray your love over them. They need you. And God, what we can't do, you do for them. What we can't be, you be for them. And Father, we pray that they don't come in the front door and leave out the back door. But you keep them, Lord. Love on them. In Jesus' name, will you clap your hands for the Lord? This is coming.
again, our youth ministry going on the other side. Amen. I said um, on uh, Sunday, January 23rd, which is about two weeks from now, right after service, we're going to have, uh, there will be two COVID-19 vaccine booster shot clinics here at the church. All right. So anybody who wants to get a booster or vaccine, again, I preached a couple of months ago uh, that if you take the vaccine, pray. If you don't take it, you need to pray. But we're not going to allow the government to separate us between vaccinated and unvaccinated. We're not going to do that. We're not going to play that game. But as a church, and some people do want to take the vaccination, especially in St. Clair, we do need folks, baby, to be the booster. So we're going to just provide it. It's up to you what you want to do. If you go get the booster shot at the church, you don't have lack of faith. <laughs> okay? And if you go get it, if you don't get it, you don't have great faith. It's just what God is telling you. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're not going to play that game that the government is trying to play. So January 23rd, right at the church, 1230 to 330. Can we get off our, I just mentioned it, can we get off our band today? Yeah.
amen, don't forget to have them. It's going to be in Centerville at Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. We'll have this information for you to disseminate so that you can be a part of that. And uh, last but not least, keep all the saints of God that are on the sick and shut-in list, keep them on, uh, uh, on your prayer list because uh, we do know that this variant is running rampant. We, know, we do know that people are catching it that have been vaccinated, whatever the case may be. But here's what the Lord has been telling me on this week of the fast. Fear not. This is not a season to be fearful. Amen. But you gotta protect yourself. You gotta cover yourself. You gotta you gotta watch out for what's going on. But it's not the time to be scared, okay? Uh, we want, really want you to be wise, though, but not fearful. We want you to quote the word of God. Amen. And all this stuff. I ain't going nowhere. That's a lie. You are gonna go somewhere. And at some point you're gonna have to go somewhere. So don't even put that in your mind. But this is what you should say. I'm going and I'm gonna be protected by the angels of the Lord. That's how I'm going. Okay, I'm going by God's protection. Amen. And last but not least, I want to make sure that we keep everybody lifted up in prayer. Keep the mothers of God in prayer. Our mothers, Lord, amen. Some of our mothers haven't had an opportunity back in church. Keep them in your prayers. If you know somebody that is deathly scared of coming back to church, I want you to call them and encourage them. If you have their number, just encourage them. If they're not ready to come back, encourage them. All right? But just let them know that hey, it's safe here. But if they're not ready to come back, keep them connected to New Bethel. Amen. Keep them somehow connected. Because nobody in this season does not they need to be without a pastor. People need churches and they need covering. And even if they don't think they need it, they need it. Amen. They need to be covered by God's love. Amen. Did you enjoy church today? Hallelujah. I think that's all. Right. Amen. Don't forget about the cotillion. Amen. For our GGU. Amen. Um, uh, Sister Amos uh, and uh, uh, Sister Lavender have all that information. Amen. For the cotillion, the young girls and the young men. If there's any young men that want to be a part of that, they are taking uh, representatives and volunteers. Sister Amos is this beautiful lady back here on the door. You can see her if you want to get involved and help. We need help in every area of ministry. All first time visitors, any first time visitors? In the audience today, any first touch, lift your hand up here, y'all do a whole lot. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I ask you to do one thing for me, just greet me and my wife before you leave. You ain't got to stand up and give us your social security number, your blood type. Just come and say hello to us before you leave. Amen. So glad you chose to worship, and hopefully you enjoyed yourself. Amen. New Bethlehem, it's time for us to speak the final blessing. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. How y'all like the new carpet in the chairs? Yeah. Amen. Amen. We got some new, some more stuff coming. Amen. But I thank God for where we are. It looks beautiful. And I want to congratulate and thank God for all the men of God who came out on Thursday. Thank you. And all the brothers that had to work but were praying for us, thank you. We know a lot of our brothers had to go to work and secure the bag, but they were praying for us. And we thank you, women. Thank you for praying for us. Amen. But it looks good in here. It looks good and it looks fresh. Amen. But the same God. The same God. So thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us up. If you're not a member here and you want to greet us, let's let the visitors greet us first. Amen. And then the members can come up and give us some love. But our pastor and first lady want to greet you before you leave. Amen. Let me bless you. Oh, yeah. Don't forget about that. Amen. We got a good lineup. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Prophet Mickelson's ministry. We're all familiar with Dr. Lyndon Bowie's ministry. Uh, and, and Pastor Clifford Mays is from Toledo, Ohio. And let Pastor tell you, he's a preaching machine. He is a preaching machine. He's going to preach us up. So all three nights are going to be amazing. From Wednesday to Friday, it's going to be amazing. So you don't want to forget that. That's the, the last week of our fast, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let me bless you from the book of Numbers chapter 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron unto his son, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, That the Lord bless thee, and the Lord keep thee. That the Lord make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. That the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. And they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide, and be with you hence now and forevermore. I speak a blessing over your life that cannot be reversed, for there's a blessing that comes only from the Lord. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray until we meet again. Have a great week, New Bethel. Be blessed. Amen. And let's give a shout for our new members. That